Okay, so if you wanted to use local field potentials and spiking activity and combine them for a neuroplastic signal, it may be a bit tricky because both signals are generated by neural tissue. So are they truly independent? And I thought this was an interesting question because when I first started recording ECOGs, and this is an anesthetized animal, you can see the nice 1 to 2 hertz ketamine oscillation that anyone who does rat work will see after surgery. And every one of these colors is, corresponds to a unique spike. So green is one uh, neuron, blue is another neuron, light blue. What do you see with the ECOG and the spiking activity? Correlated activity. Correlated activity, right. So the, 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 the spikes are firing in pre precise phase with the 1 to 2 hertz rhythm of the ECOG. So they might not contain independent information. But I had this hypothesis that as an animal uh, progresses along a behavioral axis, from anesthetize to motor learning to neuroprosthetic, perhaps the frequency of phase locking would change. So if you were going to use local field potentials, you would just band pass it with certain frequency settings, and then perhaps you could use that filtered signal as an additional control signal for a neuroprosthetic. And why did I think that? That's again, there's like two or three guys that are always ahead of everyone else. Um, you, he trained a monkey to explore a puzzle box, a puzzle box where there was a raisin inside. And when the monkey was actively exploring this puzzle box to get his raisin, Fetz noticed some 20 hertz oscillations in the motor cortex. And if he did the spike triggered average aligning whenever a spike occurred, what the LFP was doing, you can see that it phase locks rather nicely to a 20 hertz oscillation. And there's also work in the visual world, which, I haven't discuss, which I'm not going to discuss in too much detail, that during attentional tasks, spikes phase lock to gamma oscillations. And there are gamma oscillations in the motor cortex. This is work by Dan Moran and uh, Heldman at the Washington University in St. Louis. This is a typical eight, degree, eight direction task. What you're seeing is a 3D overlaid on 2D. These are the outer directions of a, square, of a cube, and these are the inner, direct, inner points of a cube. So it's like like that. And as the monkey was making these directional movement tasks, you can see the local field potentials were spectrally tuned at the high frequencies uh, towards a specific direction. So I had this hypothesis that in normal motor learning, you might see phase locking in uh, 20 hertz, and then in neuromodulation, uh, when the spike activity is heavily um, modulating, it might phase lock to the gamma frequencies. So if you were to use a neuroprosthetic device, you would simply ignore the gamma frequencies, but perhaps you could use the frequencies below 40 hertz. How did I examine this? I recorded ECOGs uh, via bone screws. I uh, also recorded LFPs and spikes with this silicon electrode. And I uh, clamped the behavior this time. The rat was trained to put both forepaws and its nose in a hole in the behavioral cage and hold it for approximately three seconds. That was the motor learning component. And then he, I would go into neuroprosthetic mode, where the first second of the trial, I would record baseline activity. There would be an auditory go cue. And the rat had the rest of the three seconds to modulate its motor cortex in order to be rewarded. This is what it looks like. So that's just the mode of learning. We had to hold it for three seconds to be rewarded. All right, now it's neuroprosthetic mode where the rat has to modulate its spiking activity. So you can hear that feedback being delivered to the rat of the state of its ensemble. You didn't get it right that time seeing if he checks food anyway. They got it right. Okay, so let's, let's look at some uh, rasters. Here's ketamine-induced anesthesia. You can see that there's a nice 2 hertz rhythm in the, both the LFP and the ECOG, and the spikes appear to be firing in phase. And if we do the spike-triggered average, you can see indeed this, that the spikes are aligning rather nicely, the phase locking rather nicely at 1 to 2 hertz. If we go to the motor learning mode, 
This time the rat had to put its nose in for three seconds. Here's its nose in. It appears that you see some kind of oscillations and this motor unit was modulating upon nose exertion. So when he removed his, his nose, then the spike uh, activity increased. If we do the spike triggered average, we can see um, phase locking at approximately eight hertz. Does anybody know what eight hertz is in a rat? Besides Gina? Is 8 hertz important for a rat? Spindles? Theta? theta. theta. Hippocampus, learning and memory, phase progression, all that. And if we go to a neuroprosthetic mode where the animal had to modulate its spiking activity, you can see he puts his nose in, there's a temporary decrease in firing rate, then an increase in firing rate for reward. We do the same thing and we find weaker but still yet oscillations at theta. But these are just single electrodes. How do we examine across the population? How do I normalize for various animals and various electrode impedances? So I isolate a single unit. Uh, I was able to record about 310 single units across six animals. I then take the spike triggered average of that single unit with the corresponding LFP. Then I take this power spectral density. I analyze the frequency content of the spike triggered average. And you can see some nice ripples at theta. But then to normalize it, I then randomize the spike times. I take all the spikes and just shuffle them. And then take the spike triggered average of the sp shuffled spike train. And you can see that the nice oscillation ripple is lost. I take the, spike, the power spectral density of the randomized spike triggered average. So now I have these two power spectral densities, these two spectra. I then just divide this randomized spectra by the normal spectra. And then I get this nice flat um, ratio of power and I can look at the frequencies of importance and so you can see that there is a nice spike at theta in this example and some associated harmonics of theta. Okay again there were six animals, 310 single units, 199 ECOGs and 212 LFPs that were noise free. And so, like I said, I had this hypothesis that as we move from anesthetized motor learning to neuroprosthetic mode, the frequency of phase locking would progressively increase. And I didn't see that. Damn. Um, so what I saw is that anesthetized, like, like you can see in those cases, you get nice phase locking at the lower frequencies. But in the motor learning and neuroprosthetic, all you see is effectively phase locking at 8 hertz theta. It might be a little weaker uh, for the neuroprosthetic, but there are not really any gamma oscillations. And I don't even go out to 100 hertz because it, it becomes a flat line. And the same thing with the ECOG. But then this got me thinking, well, Tim, you're just analyzing the whole session. Why don't we look at periods of high spiking activity? Maybe the frequency of phase locking changes when spikes are modulating. So assuming a Poisson distribution, Greg and I analyzed all the spikes and only during epochs where the spiking firing rate exceeded two standard deviations of its mean did we subject then to the spike triggered average analysis. And what did we see in that case? Maybe it worked, but it didn't. It's still only phase locked to theta, unfortunately, and its respective harmonics. I've had arguments with Joshua Burke whether you can have harmonics in the brain of theta, but I think it's just an artifact of the recording hardware. Okay, well then I thought, um, well, this is a behavioral task. Uh, why don't I just, why look at the whole session in periods of high firing? Why don't I look at the epoch where the rat was putting its nose in and compare the motor learning to the neuroprosthetic mode where in the neuroprosthetic mode the rat had to modulate its uh, motor cortex ensemble. Maybe I'll see some increased phase locking in that case. I think you know where I'm going with this. Well, no. You know, you just see, you still see just weak phase locking at the sub 10 hertz frequencies. And if you just look at the spectrograms, these are some sample spectrograms of the ECOG and the various channels, you can see that red is basically significant uh, frequency modulation in time, that we do not really see any significant modulation in the higher frequencies. Now why, why, is the, why did I see this? Why this seems to disagree with the monkey literature? I mean, it may just be a monkey thing, and, I'm, and this is a rat thing, but I think the problem is that the task was perhaps too simple, that it wasn't a direction-selective task. The rat did not have to make a variety of movements, and then we would do these analysis for the various movement directions. The rat just simply had to put its nose in a hole. And maybe you saw the, the rat was twisting a lot in that nose poke, that maybe the, the heterogeneity of his uh, twisting motions effectively washed out, you know, um, phase locking at higher frequencies so that, that, so that only the very strong theta phase locking would show up.